three, two, one, go guys. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to CEC. We've come to the last webinar in the bifurcation campus. In this campus, we've showed the fundamentals of intervention, every technique, and cases on every technique, what to do in hard times in dealing with bifurcation, and now with a crown jewel, how to deal with a trifurcation or quadrifurcation. A very, very uh, hard situation for every intervention. We have two eminent speakers, Dr. Mohammed Zahran, Assistant uh, uh, Professor of Cardiovascular Medicine at Ain Shams University, and Dr. Abdurrahman Gamal, Consultant of Cardiology National Heart Institute. And I have the honor to have Dr. Kareem Mahmoud and Dr. Ahmed Saeed as moderators with me. So let's start. Dr. Mohammed, you may share your slides and begin. Dr. Mohammed. So while Dr. Mohammed is uh, preparing his slides, Dr. Karim and Dr. Ahmed. Dr. Karim and Dr. Ahmed. Dr. Karim, uh, in your opinion, what what are uh, challenges that any interventionist can face dealing with a trifurcation or quadrifurcation? Let's see anything other than two vessels. Uh, thank you, Isam, for uh, this question. And this is the core of our uh, uh, our webinar today. Uh, actually, left main trifurcation, uh, it's, uh, it's almost always left main, uh, represent uh, uh, a, uh, a clinical and technical uh, difficulties in the interventional cardiology. Uh, once you, uh, you have faced with a case with a left main trifurcation, you should uh, combine the clinical and technical uh, data of uh, patient and reach the appropriate decision. And uh, regarding revascularization, you uh, must remember there is other choice rather than intervention, which is, uh, sur which is surgery. So first, if you are not confident uh, with your uh, procedure or if you uh, expected to uh, face uh, a very uh, difficult technical uh, 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 procedure, you can always refer the patient um, uh, to uh, surgery, except for the cases of acute situation and urgent uh, situation with hemodynamic instability. So uh, I saw Dr. Muhammad, I see Dr. Muhammad Zahran uh, is back now, so uh, he can start with his slides. Can you hear me, uh, everyone? Yes, yes, please go. Yes, on. we can hear you. Okay. Okay. So, uh, our case presentation today uh, is one uh, of the nice, interesting cases. Why uh, trifurcations and quadrifurcations are difficult? Because usually the coronary trifurcation lesions, especially the left main trifurcations, are a complex subset of lesions and are substantially more complex than bifurcations when treated with PCI. Because of the higher rates of acute periprocedural complications, including vessel dissection, vessel myocardial infarction, acute vessel closure, and less effective long-term outcomes in terms of stent thrombosis and restenosis. This is co as compared to non-bifurcation lesions involving single stent strategy. Always remember that less metal is better. Most, if not all, real-time trifurcations or quadrifurcations are left main coronary artery disease, whether it is left main LED, LCX, and ramus in cases of trifurcation, or even left main LED, high diagonal, LCX, and high OM in cases of quadrifurcations. The same general rules for proper PCI apply and should be followed regarding choice of the guiding catheters, wiring, pre-dilatation, stent sizing, 
post dilatation and kissing if more than one stent strategy is used. And you need to plan your steps. Do not go for unplanned ad hoc procedures that may risk your patient's life. And always remember, the less the metal, the better is the long-term outcome. So uh, can you hear me, Haisal and Karim? Yes, Mohammed, we, uh, we okay. are hearing you very well. Please okay. go. So this is the clinical scenario for a 48 years old housewife born and living in Cairo. She is hypertensive for 10 years and a combination of beta blockers and diuretics and uh, uh, ramipril as an ACE inhibitor. She has a past history of receiving treatment for chronic stable angina over the past three years. Regarding her cardiac history, she has been complaining of chest pain on exertion for the past three years. She sought medical advice Advice and received medical treatment in the form of aspirin or zovastatin, long acting nitrates, plus her antihypertensive medications. Her symptoms were not fully controlled on medical therapy, so she was referred to perform a coronary angiography. Her pre coronary angiography ECG showed a T wave inversion generalized in the chest leads from V1 to V6, and her echo showed an LV ejection fraction of 43% with segmental wall motion abnormality in the form of hypokinesia of the mid and basal anterior wall and the whole lateral wall with preserved left ventricular dimensions the end systolic diameter was 38 and the end diastolic diameter was 55 mild mitral regurgitation and dilated left atrium with a normal right side so this her this was her coronary angiogram this is uh, Justin left for diagnostic catheters through the right femoral artery. You have a very long left main, as you can appreciate here in the codal views. This left main gives a subtotally occluded LED involving or not involving a diagonal that we will see. And the circumflex is giving rise to a very high OM, which you may consider as a ramus intermediate, but it will be apparent in another view that is a very high OM. So here you can appreciate the atherosclerosis properly, as you can see here. The atheroma is in the LED and the diagonal and involving the ostium of the circumflex with a very high OM immediately arising from the ostium of the circumflex. This is the cranial view, and you will be surprised by what you are going to see now. I think here you can extrapolate that you have a subtotal occlusion of the LED involving the ostium of the diagonal. This is the LED, and this is the diagonal up there. Very proximal diagonal artery arising from the LED, as you can see, a subtotal occlusion and this is the LED, and this is the diagonal, and both of them are arising from this subtotal occlusion. And this is the right coronary artery injection. It was fine, just some atherosclerosis. So I will stop here. I will pass the mic to Dr. Karim, and let's see together how can we answer those four questions before we decide to revascularize. So Dr. Karim, the mic is with you now. Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, thank, thank you, Mohammed, uh, for this uh, nice case. Uh, regarding uh, the first question, uh, if we look to the clinical data of uh, this patient, this is a middle-aged, middle-aged female lady with uh, 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 decapacitating angina. Uh, however, this angina uh, occurred over the past uh, three years. So uh, I think uh, she is under the category of uh, chronic, uh, chronic coronary syndrome rather than acute coronary syndrome. This is number one. Number two, uh, the burden of ischemia is significant based on the echocardiography that showed uh, a depressed ejection fraction and the presence of uh, regional motion abnormality in the territory of uh, the LED and LCX. 
So uh, to define the coronary angiography uh, is very important. And uh, the next step is to do uh, is to, to decide revascularization. So we can now discuss the methods of revascularization. I uh, are you with me, Mohammed? Yes, I'm there. I would like to ask uh, Dr. Ahmed Saeed uh, because I know he's also an expert interventional cardiologist. Dr. Ahmed, uh, with the maximum uh, left main uh, syntax score actually uh, in the syntax uh, calculator, the maximum score that you get from a distal left main involving a 111 trifurcation, not including uh, other coronary artery stenosis, is 23. So if you have a very complex anatomy at the distal left main, in, not including a CTO in another vessel, not including calcium, not including other significant lesions, the syntax score will still be low. And since this patient is not diabetic, she's hypertensive and she's young, and all the stenting process will be involved proximally in her coronary circulation. So all the distal vessels are there for uh, a future uh, cabbage if this PCI procedure failed. In the context of this data, Dr. Ahmed Saeed, would you advise this patient to perform a cabbage or would you be more towards performing a PCI? Thank you, Dr. Zahran, uh, for the nice case. Actually, I would prefer to uh, uh, send her for the heart team discussion. Uh, especially we are having here a trifurcation distal left main or a quadrifurcation distal left main. The procedure for PCI will be uh, completely uh, uh, difficult and challenging. So uh, I would uh, preserve the PCI for this patient, especially it is here class 2B. Uh, it's not class 2A here. We are having, a, we are in the gray zone with the, a syntax score of 23 between 23 and 20 and 32 uh, so we are in the gray zone here it is class 2b and also she is not diabetic here i would prefer to send her for the heart team discussion preferring cabbage uh, initially then uh, i would preserve uh, pci only if uh, cabbage is declined either from the surgeon or uh, from the patient so this is, uh, I absolutely agree with you, except that in this intermediate syntax, it's a class 2B in the diabetics, but it's a class 2A in the non-diabetics. But usually I do not do such complex cases as a single decision. So I sent her actually to take a second opinion from another cardiac surgeon and a cardiologist as well. And she said that after one week she came back again she said that she decided to perform the PCI procedure and she said that her cardiac surgeon advised her also to perform the PCI procedure because she had some grade of obesity and some grade of COPD which was not favored by the anesthesia although it's not impossible but after discussing with her family and everything she decided to perform the PCI procedure rather than the cabbage procedure. So back to Dr. Karim, after you studied those views with us now, do you think, I want you to describe the extent of the atheroma that you see, and if this was your case and you are preparing your toolbox, what tools would you prefer to have on the table, and what technique would you perform to revascularize this patient? Thank you, Mohammed, again. Um, and it's a very nice discussion with the surgeon. Uh, uh, I believe uh, uh, yeah, most of surgeon uh, would uh, operate uh, this patient. However, uh, it might be uh, some technical uh, problems for them, te technical difficulties. Uh, the obesity, uh, I, I believe it can, uh, it can be overcome in surgeon, with surgeon, with good surgeon. However, uh, it uh, came to you and uh, this is your, uh, now your, your, uh, your step to uh, do uh, something for this patient. Uh, if we look to the atheroma burden, it's it mainly uh, uh, involving uh, the, the ostium of the LED. Uh, there is a, some disease uh, in, the, in the remus and the LCX. However, the, atheroma, the main atheroma burden involving the ostium of the LED. Uh, as you mentioned the earlier, and this is a rule for every trifurcation, 
we should try to keep it simple uh, as much as we can. But however, uh, there, there is a, some, uh, uh, some important point that should be considered in this left main uh, quadrifurcation actually, uh, which is the choice of a large guiding catheter. We are talking about seven French or eight French catheter. Uh, I believe we uh, should uh, wire every important uh, vessel to avoid the occlusion of uh, these vessels. We might end with the three or four wires in these important, uh, important uh, vessels. We should uh, do a good pre-dilatation uh, for the region that we are going to uh, uh, stent it. So uh, a good pre-dilatation to the ostium of LED is mandatory. Uh, the use of uh, why the uh, open cell stent uh, is mandatory and uh, the liberal use of casing balloon, as you will mention, and the final bot is also very important because, uh, uh, as you mentioned earlier, uh, with every uh, effort we do for uh, uh, improving the long-term outcome in this kind of patient, still these patients have uh, a, a worse, uh, let, let, me, let us say, a worse uh, long-term outcome as compared with the, uh, the maybe the, by the two stent, the, the, the regular left main bifurcation technique. So the question for, uh, uh, for you, Karim, and for Ahmed, uh, is the size of the side branches matters as an interventionist? I mean, if these side branches, uh, long side branches, but the diameter of them is uh, 1.5 or 1. Uh, the, this will, will be into your calculation, uh, preserving these side branches, wiring the side branches or not. As uh, the case of uh, Zahran, the ramus and diagonal branches are long uh, branches, but with a diameter of 1.5 uh, at the most estimation. So uh, this point can change your strategy a little bit or not? So, thank um, you. Thank you. Go, go on, Ahmed. Go on. Yeah, yes. Thank you, Dr. Aysam. Uh, actually, I think uh, the, the chronic occlusion of the vessel, uh, especially if it is like, like a remus and 1.5 or a small branch, yes, you can neglect in uh, revascularization. But the problem here when losing uh, a side branch, even if it is uh, a small caliber of, or it's not covering a very big territory, acute closure causes acute ischemia. Uh, I have many, many patients when, when I decided to leave uh, that small side branch and then the side branch closes and the patient is having a significant chest pain and sometimes he is having a significant hemodynamic uh, compromise with this uh, uh, small vessel. Uh, my view, I, I usually wire every single small uh, branch uh, uh, as long as it is included in the bifurcation or the trifurcation i wire the vessel even if uh, so if it is lost and the small vessel or or like an osteal pinch and then uh, it's not significant and nothing is is happening so i can leave it but uh, at least i have to put a wire inside so uh, i can access uh, that vessel later or for a seven french or an eight french uh, guiding catheter yes Uh, it so thank you, actually, thank you, Ahmed, Zahran. for uh, for the for the illustrative answer. Zahran, uh, welcome back. <clears throat> Zahran, do you hear me? Welcome back. So, uh, so Kar uh, Karim, uh, uh, we, point, we uh, are waiting for your answer. To, to stress on the point, Ahmed uh, has mentioned. Uh, wiring uh, uh, every uh, vessel uh, involved in a bifurcation, I think, uh, I, I believe it is essential uh, because if uh, the, 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 the wi wiring uh, helps to keep uh, the vessel patent, uh, you might have a benching of the vessel, but if we have a, a temperature flow, we're just uh, putting a, a, a wire in these important uh, branches, you can end your procedure like that keeping this uh, small vessel patent. So wiring of these small uh, branches uh, involved in bifurcation is essential also. 
Yes, I totally so agree you're... with uh, okay. uh, both of you. Actually, this is uh, this is a very good point that you need to wire because the four vessels here, the LED, the high diagonal, the LCX, and the OM are very important. Uh, I don't know uh, when I disconnected. You agreed on a seven French or an eight French uh, system. If we have eight we, French, we didn't pose this question. Uh -huh. if, if okay. We... So, uh, would you like to? Choose an eight French or a seven French would be enough. Uh, actually, if, uh, if if I have an eight French system, it would be uh, it would be uh, good. However, I know that uh, most of our guiding caster here in Egypt is seven French. We do have eight French system, but I want you to take a look at the ostium uh, of the left main and the size of the left main. This is a, a six French diagnostic catheter. Would you think that you would safely put an eight French here in this long left main? And uh, what if it glides a little bit inside and the pressure damping and everything? Um, this is a good point, dear Zaron. But uh, I don't think that uh, eight French will be harmful or uh, big enough to occlude the left main, unless you have an osteal left main uh, disease. Uh, I think there is no problem yes, in using I agree an eight with you, But with, with the length, I'm speaking about the length of the left main and the gliding in and out of the guiding catheter. If it is a very short left main, yes, I would use an eight French. But for me, uh, for this particular case, uh, I chose to use uh, a seven French action. I think. Uh, I, so I think uh, let's French. continue uh, okay. what we did here. Yes, uh, we need maybe to clarify a point to the viewers also that uh, the seven French system can accommodate uh, three wires and uh, two balloons and the seven French system can accommodate uh, two wires and two stamps so uh, it gives you a nice space uh, to need to operate because most probably uh, you will not need more than three wires and two balloons at any particular point of the revascularization so we went with uh, a seven French uh, guiding catheter through the seven French uh, right femoral and I started passing uh, floppy wires, the BMW wires, this passed to the diagonal, the first wire, the second wire passed to the LED, and I passed the third wire as I guess. Ah, before I passed the third wire, because as Karim said, the circumflex was not so involved in the atheroma. So I said, uh, let's pass the balloon and pre-dilate the diagonal branch, which was previously subtotally occluded. And after that, we can pass the third wire while we pass the stent to the LA. So I started, I started by pre-dilating the diagonal branch because my plan was to perform a single crossover left main to LED stent. And after that, let's see how it goes. So I pass the third wire now to the circumflex. So I have a wire in the diagonal, a wire in the LED, and I have a wire in the circumflex. And this is a 4 by 38 uh, Zion's Alpine stand, which I pass from the left main to the LED. And I now I have two jailed wires, one wire in the diagonal and one wire in the circumflex. I'm focusing here on the stand so I can adjust its position as you can see here i do not need to stand down to the ostium this is a very long left main and it has a very healthy shaft so i do not need to stand down to the ostium i will just show you that this stand covers most of the left main shaft at least the straight part and it covers the led down to the beyond the subtotal occlusion and we did a pre-dilatation to the diagonal. So now we are inflating this stent, and as you can appreciate, the very tight waist at the distal one third of the stent, which involves the ostium of the LED. And we have a wire in the circumflex in case the carina shift happened or something. And this is after the stent is inflated. Karim, I want you to comment on this because you said that the circumflex at the beginning was not really involved. I want you to comment on this and explain to the viewers what happened. Uh, thank you, Mohammed. Um, 
despite uh, the the circumflex is not uh, really diseased uh, at the first sight however uh, we are know that uh, uh, we all know that uh, the distal left main uh, uh, is uh, uh, atheroma is extending into the ostium of the LED and the LCX. So uh, what happened here, and uh, what happened with uh, with you with you inflating the left main LED stent, it's what called uh, a carina shift. Here we has uh, a, a, a severe benching at the ostium of uh, the LCX. Uh, at this ostium, we have uh, we have the, the, this small obtuse marginal uh, emerging is emerging from uh, the ostium of the LCX. So uh, here we are faced uh, we faced with a carina shift that uh, needs to be treated if the patient have uh, symptoms, if the patient if the, the vessel show a less than Dimitri flow. Or if you are dealing with a large vessel supplying a large myocardial territory. Mohammed. Second question I will pass to Dr. Haysam. Yes, I'm with you, Karim. I totally agree with what you said. I will pass the second question to Dr. Haysam. Do you think that pre dilatation of the diagonal artery now makes the diagonal much better after the LED was tented, Haysam? Uh, the question is back to you. Do your patient, do your patient have any symptoms? The patient now is sweating, hypotensive, has blood pressure. Her blood pressure is seventy over four. I think, I think this is from the coronary shift to the circumflex. Uh, the the diagonal has a symmetry flow, and um, with this view, it's not obvious that the the ostium of the diagonal is severely pinched. So I think uh, you better uh, concentrate into the bigger branch, bigger, most important branch, which is the circumflex. I don't think that the diagonal will matter the most. I totally agree with you. I just need to check on the LED. This area was healthy. The area that looks a little bit so diminuted after the stent, this area was previously healthy. The problem is her blood pressure is 70 over 40, so I'm not going to give her any nitroglycerin now. As you said, I nearly 100% know the reason is the subtotal occlusion of the circumflex now. So it's better to focus on the circumflex. I just viewed here that the diagonal has a tree flow, and the proper pre-dilatation of the diagonal was enough for this branch, actually. So we can focus now on the circumflex. Okay, Ahmed Saeed, uh, would you like to give us a tip before recrossing to the circumflex? If we did a nice spot in the left main, would it be easier for us to recross to the circumflex? Yes, Dr. Zahran, I think uh, pot will make it easier. But as long as you said the patient is sweating and the significant chest pain uh, and hemodynamic uh, started to uh, decline. So I, I think I, I would try first to pass the wire uh, into the circumflex and open uh, the carina to, uh, yes. uh, to, to I the totally agree. circumflex before what I do I the did, Yes, what I did is like what Dr. Ahmed Saeed and Dr. Haysam advised me to do. I withdraw the wire from the diagonal branch and into the guiding catheter because this wire is all through the stent behind the stent struts. This is a gelled wire. I have another wire in the circumflex, which is also gelled. I'm keeping this wire now as a mark for me. As you see, I cannot pass the wire through the stent struts. So I took a balloon to make the pot in the left main. This is a short 4.5 millimeter balloon which i will do to perform the pot and later on i will do it or i will use it also for something else and maybe when i make this pot as you see where while the balloon is getting inflated what happens here the wire is automatically directed towards the ostium of the circumflex because this part of the stent is geometrically getting wider with opening the struts at the carina. So when I deflate this balloon, as you see here, I can easily pass the wire across into the diagonal. I'm using double mag here, so I can recross from the distal strut, as you know. 
and here uh, you see the left male after being popped is actually much bigger and the flow through the circumflex and the om is actually also much better and then here i'm passing my wire step by step as you can see here it's not an easy job with some patience and finally i pass the wire to the obtuse marginal branch so now i have an access through this stand to the circumflex territory okay this is after i passed my wires as you can appreciate here Heisem, that the diagonal artery is perfectly well after being predilated it does not need any further intervention regarding the diagonal artery i will focus on the circumflex so i will draw the wire in the circumflex now into the guiding catheter and i'm recrossing through the stent struts now into the circumflex so all the wires now are passing from the left main directly to the vessels and i do not have any jailed wires so this is now i will show you that this wire will pass of course as you see the angle is so difficult but finally we succeeded to do the job this is we pass through so now we pass through the stand to the om we pass through the stand to the circumflex and everything is going on perfect and then we can pass the balloon to perform the pre-dilatation at the ostium of the circumflex this is a three millimeter non-compliant short balloon 15 millimeters in length and i put the 4.5 multiplied by 12 millimeter balloon in the led first of all i will inflate the ostium of the circumflex as you can see here to readjust and reposition the carina just as dr karim said because we appreciate that the atherosclerosis burden from the start is not very big here then i take out this balloon and then i i do a repot again to the left main and then i'm gonna see how everything looks so this is the left main the timmy flow is much better the ostium looks much better and then we will make the inflation for the pot in the left main now This was, I did a kissing with the 4.5 balloon. This was a 5.5 balloon because the Zions 4 actually can be increased to 5.5. As you can appreciate here, after I did this very big pot, the ostium of the circumflex is perfectly normal. The ostium of the, A, of the OM is perfectly normal. The ostium of the diagonal is perfectly normal. And the left main LED stent is very well opposed. What is your comment, Dr. Karim, up till now? I think uh, you you have reached a, a very good result uh, till now. You uh, you did you uh, uh, correct uh, the the pinching and the carina shift at the ostium of the LCX, uh, and I believe the patient symptoms improved uh, after opening uh, this uh, large uh, circumflex. Uh, uh, you did a kissing balloon followed by bot, and we have a chemistry flow uh, and uh, uh, absence of pinching and absence of uh, uh, significant carina shift in the LCX. So uh, I believe uh, this is a good result to reach and uh, to keep it simple. Uh, uh, I think uh, we can stop at this uh, point and, uh, the, and give the patient uh, uh, good medical treatment with uh, dual antiplatelet uh, for a long duration. Uh, this can help here and can uh, give uh, here a good uh, term, out, good long term outcome. So back uh, to you, Mohammed. And uh, I, I, I have uh, some questions. Uh, Muhammad? My my blood pressure now is 130 over 80, and as you know that there was a part in the LED that I did not like previously. So after I withdraw the wires, and when we draw the because we do not want to damage 
anything while we are coming out. So I take the circumflex wire out, then I take the OM, and then I push 100 mics of ventral coronary nitro because I want to check on this system. It looks fine here after I took the wires. Hey, Sam Suleiman, would you like, this is without any wires. Would you like to comment on anything on this angiographic view? Actually, you did a great job, uh, Zahran. Mm -hmm. um, I, I totally agree with Karim that uh, now is the uh, role of the medical treatment, of the extensive medical treatment. You did a great job to the tight lesions. You've corrected uh, all of them and uh, let the medical treatment do its job. Um, yes, let's see I another agree. projection to show the spastic, yes. the spastic uh, part of the LAD after uh, the spasm was gone. Yes, so this is the right caudal view. Also, I'm looking at the ostium of the circumflex. It oh, looks this fine. Is and the OM branches are all preserved. And this is the cranial view. We want to look at the rest of the LAD after nitro. As you can see, it's perfectly normal and also, the diagonal R3 is perfectly normal. This is the part that was passed previously after the stent, after giving the nitro. It is totally corrected. So, so I Perfect took out zero. all my wires and this was the final view. So, uh, the lesson learned from this case for me is always remember, you can put three stents, four stents, five stents, nine stents. Less metal is better. Most if not real life trifurcations or quadrifurcations are left main coronary artery disease. No one is going to do a bifurcation for an LED second diagonal and third septum. If you have a trifurcation, it's an LED LCX ramus. If you have a quadrifurcation like this one, it's an LED diagonal LCX OM. And if they are very close to the distal left main, unfortunately like this case it is a left main intervention case the same general rules for pci apply take the guiding catheter that will allow you to pass your equipment the six french allows two wires allows two balloons allows one balloon and one stent the seven french allows three wires allows two balloons allows two stents so you need to know what what you need to pass and then you will decide according to your guiding catheter make a very good pre-dilatation as you have seen here pre-dilatation of the diagonal artery spared us a stent in the diagonal after stenting the left main led stent sizing should be one to one according to the distal diameter and you should know that the stent the fda approved stents at size four millimeter can be increased up to 5.5 post dilatation and kissing if needed as we did in this case plan your steps do not go for an unplanned ad hoc procedure it may risk your patient's life and it may risk your own career as a doctor always remember less metal is better have a plan a a plan b a plan c because if one plan fails you will jump to the alternative plan do not push yourself to do procedures that you cannot do or that you have not done previously under supervision and never start practicing bifurcation intervention in left main procedures. Plan your steps again. Do not go for unplanned ad hoc procedures on the table that may risk your patient's life. Do not put a stent in the left main that is 3.5 or 4 millimeters and happily drive back home. The IVA studies showed us that 85% of the left mains are 5 millimeter, 5.5 or 6 millimeter. For me, I always put the left main with the favorite 5.5 by 12 or 6 by 12 millimeter balloons. A proper pot will always allow you to recross comfortably to the side branch if you cannot pass properly and always remember again the less the metal the better is the long-term outcome thank you so much kareem haysam ahmed and abrahman for moderating this case uh, thank you so thank much uh, dear zahran kareem you can go 
Yeah, thank you so Welcome. much, Raul. I, I believe you uh, you uh, you have mentioned uh, uh, several messages. Uh, that is uh, the, the take home messages for the whole bifurcation uh, course. Uh, I believe it uh, can it should be applied uh, for the whole uh, lesson we have learned uh, during uh, these uh, eight uh, webinars of bifurcation. So um, some questions to me regarding uh, the left main uh, by trifurcation and the quadrifurcation. Uh, do you agree that, uh, as you mentioned, that we should uh, prepare a bailout uh, plan for uh, complications that can happen during our procedure? And it is very, it's very common in the cases of left main trifurcation. Yes, I do. The first of all, you need to know what you can do as an operator. So some operators cannot pass a stent and a balloon in a six French guiding catheter. It's a little bit difficult. The space is small and you need to know what to do actually. So sometimes if you are doing a bifurcation from a six French guiding catheter, which by the way is the most common way to make a bifurcation through the six French and through the radial approach. You need to know that you need to pass the bulky device first. So you pass the stent first. You put the stent distally inside the vessel, not inside the guiding catheter. So the part of the stent that is remaining inside the guiding catheter is actually the shaft, not the stent device itself, which is more bulky. After that, you start passing your balloon. It passes usually very easily. If you are not comfortable doing bifurcation through six French, no problem at all. I think it's better if you go to seven French. So the first thing is the guiding catheter. This is very important. Number two, if you are using two wires, if you are using three wires, there is a possibility that the wires are getting twisted over each other inside the guiding catheter. Okay, so how can we treat this situation? First of all, preventing this situation. Some operators, their hands have a problem that they start torquing the wire once they hold the wire in their hand. You do not need to torque the wire unless the wire is inside the coronary artery. If you torque the second wire inside the stem of the guiding catheter, this wire will be twisted across the first wire. So you gently push the second wire until it arises from the tip of the guiding catheter after it arises from the tip of the guiding catheter if it passes directly to the coronary artery that you want to use it's fine otherwise make the torque the torsion of the second wire the minimum as possible and exactly at the ostium of the side branch that you are stenting so you can avoid twisting of the wires of course the same applies to the third wire and usually if you pass three wires, you need, you need to put a marker outside so you know which wire is passing into which vessel. Number three is the issue of recrossing. Recrossing through the metal. Of course, as you have seen in this case, it was not an easy procedure to recross from this tent to every single branch. But number one, hydro phobic wires or floppy wires are much safer because they do not pass between the stent and the vessel wall. Number two, you can make the reverse fishing technique. You pass through the stent firstly, and then you withdraw your stuff again back until you try to fish for the distal strut. Number three, performing a very good pot will change the geometry of the stent and will allow you to recross to the second branch. Finally, you always have a bailout in case the vessel dissected or you need to insert a second stent. No problem. If you pass the balloon, you can adequately dilate the stent strut and you can perform a T or tap technique as a bailout procedure. So uh, this is, these are very informative tips. Um, one more question, Mohammed, regarding uh, predilatation of the side branch. Uh, as we mentioned in the first uh, webinars of bifurcation, um, we should uh, we should do not uh, uh, routine predilatation of a side branch. 
So uh, again, at the last of bifurcation camp, when did you when do you find uh, bifurcation of side branch a redilatation of side branch necessary? For me, I thought that this diagonal branch will be stented because, as you have appreciated in the cranial view, that the diagonal and the LED both of them arise from the subtotal 99% occlusion. I predilated the diagonal because I planned to stent this diagonal by a T technique. After I performed the left main to LED stent, and after I performed the very good pot as I some advice to the left main, and the CX was successfully managed, and after I gave the nitro, I found that the distal LED and the ostium of the diagonal are very, very, very good. So I do not need to pass a stent. So let's say that the rule of thumb that needs to be followed by everyone, usually you do not predilate the side branch unless you're going for a two stand strategy, which would have been a plan B in this case. But thanks, I mean, it happened that fate was standing beside us in this case. So the diagonal branch was perfectly normal after the predilatation and the stenting to the LED, and we did not need to put a second step. Okay, thank you, dear Zahran. Uh, this was a, a very illustrative and a lovely procedure and skillful at, as well. Uh, so uh, now we are inviting uh, our dear friend, Dr. Abdurrahman Gamal, to show us his case of uh, complex bifurcation or trifurcation uh, into the left main. So, Abdurrahman, start sharing your slides, please. Uh, thank you, uh, my dear friend, uh, Dr. Haysam Suleiman, uh, for the nice introduction. Uh, actually, uh, today is our uh, uh, last or final webinar of uh, our course, the Bifurcation uh, Campus. Uh, it is uh, uh, too difficult, actually, uh, to tell you new uh, data uh, after Zahran uh, uh, mentioned most of the uh, uh, important tips and the tricks uh, regarding the trifurcation. Uh, before I start, I would like to thank uh, uh, the whole uh, uh, CEC board uh, for their great efforts and participation in this uh, uh, course. And uh, it is a pleasure uh, uh, to do uh, the final uh, webinar uh, to be uh, presented and moderated by the uh, CEC uh, board. Uh, uh, thank you, Kareem, Haysam, Saeed, Zahran. Uh, all of you. Uh, I will start my presentation now. Uh, one moment, please. Okay, uh, can you see it now? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, as I said before, it is difficult to tell you uh, new uh, data regarding the trifurcation lesions after my dear friend uh, Zahran elegantly presented his presentation and his nice case. Uh, I would like to con congratulate him for that nice case. Uh, however, uh, left main trifurcation encountered, encountered uh, about 10% of all uh, coronary angiograms uh, uh, in the real world. Uh, a single stent strategy, as Zahran said, is still always a favorable uh, strategy uh, uh, in trifurcation. Uh, generally speaking, if the side branches have limited disease, uh, triple uh, kissing balloon inflations uh, may be associated with favorable uh, and, uh, early and long-term uh, results. And according to the specific anatomy, uh, the side branches of significant sizes and diseases might require, of course, two stent techniques. Uh, uh, most of the techniques actually uh, 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 were explained uh, in details uh, throughout all the bifurcation course. Uh, and our dear uh, followers and audience can uh, revise all the uh, webinars from webinar one uh, till that this one. Uh, 
Uh, a minor side branch, uh, if, if it's ACX or Ramus, is generally identified and treated with a strategy. You all uh, know it will uh, keep it open. Uh, this presentation uh, will clarify uh, uh, different scenarios uh, with predictors of trifurcation uh, success. So how can we classify uh, and assess uh, trifurcation uh, lesions? Uh, this is what's called uh, modified Medina classification. Uh, we add a fourth uh, digit, as you can appreciate here, uh, 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 if it, this is a, a left main and this is a LED, so the distal left main will take number one, proximal LED number two, and the left main LED will be treated as the uh, main branch. Uh, uh, then the nearest uh, 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 side branch will be side branch one and the far east side branch two will take digits three and four. Uh, as you can appreciate here on your uh, right hand, these are all the possibilities of the uh, modified Medina classification. Uh, if we have four ones, so this is a true uh, trifurcation. And all the other possibilities, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, and etc., will uh, explain the whole possibilities of uh, trifurcation. Uh, a trifurcation lesion was defined as diameter stenosis more than 50% within five millimeters to the carina, uh, which of course involving the main branch, as we said, the most of, the, of, that, of this classification uh, would be used in left main trifurcation. Uh, any trifurcation in the left main, uh, uh, it is mandatory to wire all the uh, three branches irrespective of the diameter of the stenosis because of course, left main, uh, uh, sorry, uh, ramus intermediates and the LCX is uh, uh, very, uh, very, uh, or the most important two side branches of a trifurcation. Uh, of course, the main branch would, would be defined as the bigger branch, uh, the two other side branches, one with the narrower angle from the distal main branch would be defined as side branch one, and the, uh, the wider angle uh, branch would be uh, defined as the side branch two. So I will present uh, uh, two uh, uh, trifurcation uh, cases in a few uh, minutes each, if you let me. Uh, any comment or question, uh, my dear friends, uh, uh, Kareem, Haysam, Ahmed, and Zahran? No, go uh, ahead, uh, uh, Zia. So, go so one small question, Abdul um, uh, If we look to bifurcation uh, and uh, we uh, calculate uh, the diameter of uh, the proximal main segment, uh, if we depend, uh, let's say, about the finite uh, formula, we calculated it as a two third of the, the the main vessel, the distal main vessel, and the side branch. So uh, does does it does this apply for the the trifurcation also? It is a very very uh, good and nice question, Karim. Thank you for that question. Of course, uh, the uh, uh, geometry of trifurcation is a little bit different from uh, bifurcations, and the uh, formula uh, may be also uh, modified as uh, uh, three quarters uh, uh, of the sum of the three uh, branches. Uh, however, uh, uh, there is a, a few studies illustrating the uh, difference in geometry between the trifurcation and bifurcation. And of course, uh, the uh, shear stress and the geometry of trifurcation is more tough than the uh, uh, bifurcation. Uh, uh, can you see now the, uh, the, the angiogram? Is it uh, uh, clear for you or not? Yes, please. Yes, it's clear. clear. Uh, but let it uh, keep it uh, playing. I mean, we need to okay. see it uh, lots of times because it's a little bit slow. Okay. 
You see it clearly now, Zahran? Yes. This is, of course, a, 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 a trifurcation lesion, and I will let the angiogram uh, uh, play to the end, and please uh, uh, tell me uh, your uh, opinion. I would like to hear from uh, Zahran, uh, Kareem Haysam, and Ahmed Saeed. Uh, this patient uh, is uh, uh, a chronic coronary just, syndrome just patient. Just keep, uh, keep the spider view or the coder okay. view okay. so that we can appreciate the distal left main and the location area. Uh, so some clinical data, please, Abdul Rahman. Uh, this uh, a 50 years old uh, uh, male uh, presented with uh, uh, typical chest pain uh, on uh, 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 exertion. Uh, he is uh, diabetic, hypertensive, um, and with a previous history of uh, PCI with uh, uh, no documents with him. And as you can appreciate, this is his uh, angiogram. Yes, thank you, Dr. Abdurrahman, uh, for this uh, case. As, as I see here, the left main is... Uh, is little bit diffusely diseased from uh, the ostium uh, till the distal. It's a true uh, trifurcation like uh, one, one, zero, uh, one. Uh, I, I think the remus is a little bit, uh, the remus ostium is a little bit healthy and we have uh, osteal uh, LED of significant uh, stenosis and uh, osteal uh, significant stenosis of the left circumflex also. I think there is uh, some proximal LED uh, after that ostium uh, diseased also. Uh, so I think the remus is a little bit healthy and the left main is diffuse for, uh, diffusely diseased uh, from the ostium uh, till uh, the distal. Uh, thank you. Abdurrahman, uh, Abdurrahman, can you clarify the PCI history of this patient? I see a stent, a patent stent in, <laughs> sorry into this uh, uh, ramus. Yes, you this are right. had the previous PCI to the proximal yes. ramus. That's correct, Haysam. Uh, as you mentioned, we have uh, a patent stent uh, at the ramus intermediate. And uh, as Ahmed Saeed uh, said, uh, we have a diffuse disease uh, all through the left main with very tight uh, osteal uh, LED and a thread-like uh, uh, LED uh, till the apex. So um, my question is, is the presence of a metal inside one of your uh, trifurcation branch will change uh, a little bit your strategy uh, or uh, taking any consideration about um, the difficulty, the type of wires, the steps that we you will take, um, because uh, here these are, are not all native vessels. One of them is containing a metal a stent. So, uh, if, if there is any precautions, anything that will change your chain, your strategy. Uh, thank you, Haytham. Of course, we have a good point of view that we have a, 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 a patent and a very good uh, uh, history of this of that patient with the stents. And of course, uh, we didn't we don't know if uh, that may uh, uh, may be an obstacle uh, in uh, exchanging wire recrossing and uh, passing the stents. If we have only uh, a half a strut protruding to that trifurcation, it will make our procedure uh, uh, more uh, tough, uh, 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 more than a, a, a simple trifurcation. And of course, there is no simple uh, trifurcations. Uh, actually, I would like to uh, hear from uh, Zahran and Karim. So uh, thank you, Abdurrahman. Uh, to complete uh, the decision regarding uh, revascularization of this patient, this is again a uh, middle aged uh, male with diabetes, I think. Uh, uh, diabetes, right? yes. yes. He has a diabetes um, and he has acute coronary syndrome uh, in the form of accelerating angina. Uh, so, uh, this is not an ST segment elevation. 
And uh, we should uh, calculate the whole clinical data in, of this patient. We should calculate the syntax score. Uh, we should take in consideration the diffuse uh, disease uh, in the LED that uh, might uh, limit uh, the choice of uh, surgery. And uh, lastly, uh, if we decide to do intervention, we should describe uh, uh, a detailed, uh, should, do, should, we should do a detailed description of the left main trifurcation. And I believe that the main disease burden uh, involving the ostium of the LED, uh, and also there is an ostial left main disease. So uh, again, uh, doing a plan uh, uh, for revascularization of this left main LED and keeping the, uh, the Remus and the LCX patent might be optimal for this patient. Uh, thank you, Kareem, for this uh, nice uh, uh, illustration. Uh, uh, actually, we have uh, 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 a favorable uh, syntax score. And as you mentioned, we have a thread like uh, LED. Uh, and uh, uh, actually, it is not a true uh, uh, trifurcation. It is 1 1, as Ahmad said, mentioned, it is 1 1 0 0. So uh, uh, we decided to go for uh, PCI to left main LED. Uh, so we, uh, uh, what is your opinion, Haysam, regarding wiring of the, uh, of the branches? Should I, I, I wire the three branches or uh, two branches? And if I will wire only two branches, which two branches I would wire? Um, regarding the, the safety and not the burden of, um, you've answered here the question before yes. uh, we've answered uh, with this picture, but uh, yes. regarding the, the extension of the flag burden uh, and the safety, you should wire both branches, the circumflex and the um, ramus, along with the LED, of course, taking into consideration to wire the ramus with a non-hydrophilic wire because it, it, it can pass easily behind the previously deployed stent. But, um, and of course you have ch to change your system to a seven trench system. Uh, and this is also for, uh, for safety. Um, I think the larger or the more dangerous challenge that you face here is the discrepancy in size. You have, uh, uh, my opinion is that you have to cross uh, from the left main to the LAD, and you have a great discrepancy between the size of the LAD and the distal left main. So this is your bi bigger uh, problem or the biggest uh, problem of the extension of the plaque burden into the circumflex or the ramus. So what's your plan for dealing with this discrepancy? Uh, so I mentioned a very important thing. Thank uh, yes. uh, I, I, I mentioned a very important point regarding the discrepancy, and I believe if you have the luxury to use an IVAS to uh, determine the size of the LED and the left main, this would be uh, greatly helpful in this case, Abdurrahman. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Haysam. Uh, very, very uh, nice tips as usual. And uh, thank you, Karim. Uh, um, all uh, that tips actually, as exactly Haysa mentioned, uh, was on my mind when uh, dealing with uh, this uh, uh, complex uh, lesions. Uh, this is uh, already uh, seven French uh, uh, catheter cream and seven French uh, system. And I believe that uh, this LED is of course uh, of uh, not of that caliber, and uh, that will take us back to your uh, early question, Karim. And I will ask you back, uh, what do you think the real size of that proximal LED and that left main? Uh, regarding the left main, it's, uh, it's at least 5.5 uh, uh, millimeter diameter. It's a very large uh, left main actually. Uh, regarding the LED, uh, this question, uh, Abdurrahman. Uh... 
Yes, Zahran uh, Karim was mentioning a point. I and I will ask you uh, a, a very, very uh, 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 difficult question, dear Zahran. Uh, uh, we missed you this few min minutes. Go, Karim, please. Regarding the proximal LED, uh, usually proximal LED uh, is uh, 3.5 to 4 uh, millimeters. So uh, after a good predilatation of the ostium and maybe using IVUS, we can find this LED is large enough and it's uh, the case of this small dam. The cause of this small diameter is a diffuse disease of uh, this LED. However, I believe uh, this LED would be uh, 3.5 millimeter, uh, but the diffuse disease, na diffuse disease nature causing this narrowing of the LED. Okay, back to my dear friend uh, Zahran, which is one of the most uh, eminent uh, intervention experts in Egypt. And of course, Karim and Haysam and Ahmed Saeed, uh, 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 it was a very, very nice uh, uh, bifurcation call uh, by uh, sharing the, their uh, experience and cases. Please, Zahran, uh, uh, what do you think? Zahran? Okay, until Zahran come back, Karim, I will ask you a, a final question before I continue. Can we uh, uh, reverse the calculation here? Uh, uh, I have a, a real diameter of the, uh, or, or, or um, what's called a, a normal diameter of the Ramus and the LCX, and we can uh, imagine the left mean, so we can re reverse our calculation to know the uh, 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 diameter of the LED, or what do you think? Um, the problem here is uh, is to um, uh, select uh, the segment that you would uh, place uh, your stent. Uh, again, uh, we can do uh, some calculation and uh, make uh, an assumed calculation of the proximal LED. However, uh, uh, with this diffused nature of uh, the LED, uh, I believe we should uh, be, uh, should th this procedure should be optimized with the use of IVUS, both to select the diameter and to uh, detect a normal reference area that we can place uh, our stent in the LED, of course. Uh, thank you. Actually, if, my, if, if uh, I might say, uh, dear Karim, um, here there is a, a serious challenge that we uh, do not have an accurate estimation, even an estimation of the actual size of the native uh, uh, ramus because of the stent. And if we calculate it at the ramus before the uh, its distal bifurcation, we'll show the we'll no, uh, notice that the ramus at the distal bifurcation is bigger than the ostium of the ramus. Um, at least add this uh, image. So um, I, I, as you mentioned, Karim, several times, I think IVUS here is mandatory because we do not even have an accurate estimation of the diameters of this uh, uh, trifurcation uh, regarding the left to estimate the size of the LED or the distal left main. Thank you, Aysam. Of course, uh, uh, IVAS is mandatory in all uh, left main interventions. It is class 2A. And of course, uh, in this particular case, it is a trifurcation with uh, very uh, difficult uh, to, uh, uh, to know the diameter of the proximal uh, LED where the uh, uh, distal landing zone of your stent uh, would be uh, uh, put. So, uh, I uh, pass uh, two workhorse uh, uh, wires in the LED and the uh, Ramus, and I decided to uh, put a direct uh, 3.5 by 82 uh, uh, stent, uh, which can be uh, further uh, uh, inflated by uh, a 5 or 5.5 NC balloons to do uh, the bot. Uh, and you mean uh, you mean by 28 not 82 28, yes what i said <laughs> 28 yes yes i am and that is the uh, uh, angiogram uh, before 
I took out my uh, uh, my uh, balloon. Uh, I was very, very cautious and careful. I, I inflated it to the nominal first. And when I have seen that the distal uh, edge of the stent is good, I go for uh, more inflation to 16. Uh, uh, slow, slow, down, slow, to, slow down a little bit there. Slow down. Okay. Slow down, uh, yes. Yes. Now we have a stent in the uh, left main from the osteal left main to the proximal LED. We have uh, side branches preserved. Of course, uh, uh, if you have to tackle one side branch, it's preferably to tackle both side branches with two wires. But if we pass one wire, it would be uh, uh, the one with the uh, narrowest angle, which is here the uh, Remus. And as you can appreciate here, the two side branches is uh, uh, quite uh, preserved. And the distal uh, uh, stent of the LED is very good. So I decided uh, to put another uh, stent uh, from the proximal to the uh, mid LED uh, to uh, 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 the most uh, or the what appear to be healthy uh, uh, in the mid LED. And that was the and uh, an inflation in between the two stents with a very high uh, pressure. And that was the uh, result of the LED. And now I have to uh, tackle the uh, point of pot. Actually here, I have used to do uh, a nice technique. Uh, I discussed this technique before with my dear friend Zahran. Uh, what is uh, I call uh, a stepped bot, if I can say. Uh, if I have a trifurcation, I would do uh, two level of bot. The first level at the uh, uh, first uh, uh, point uh, or the first carina between the uh, main branch and the side branch one. And I will uh, withdraw my uh, NC balloon a little bit uh, uh, approximately, and I will do another uh, pot at the uh, level of the uh, uh, second uh, bifurcation of the trifurcation. And actually, it works uh, uh, many times, and it is a very good uh, uh, stepped uh, pot uh, if we can uh, describe it as uh, that. And that was the uh, final uh, result. What your opinion, my Abdurrahman? Uh, Abdurrahman, um, can you show us um, the last uh, uh, picture, please? The last, yes. Okay. The caudal view. Okay. I think there is a considerable pinching at the ostium of the ramus. Yes, there is not pinching. It is a hazness, uh, but actually, I have a Timothy flu with no uh, uh, clinical or ECG changes. And the patient was doing very, very uh, well. So I decided not to interfere with that osteal uh, ramus. It is a slight bit hazardous, Hyson. What do you think? Um, so, in the presence of this, this vessel is a very good, is a very big vessel. It's uh, more important than the circumflex itself. So, I think uh, you have to spend more time um, verifying that this haziness is not a plaque a shift or a disturbance of the ostium of this stent before uh, getting this patient out. So, uh, and I have a bunch of questions for you, Abdurrahman. Yes, First please. of all, it was um, very unorthodox uh, and very unusual to do a direct stent into the left main LAD. 
before doing uh, any bifurcation. I think you have to stop. You you shifted to the other uh, yes, sir. case. Okay. So okay. stop your uh, video. Okay. So um, you have you have done a very um, unusual step, uh, doing a direct left main LED stent before uh, dilating the ostium of this LED. Um, I don't know. Uh, yes, can you, you are right. tell us? You are right. Always preparation what, what? of any lesion is mandatory. Yes. What, what 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 was your rationale in uh, not not dilating the ostium of the LED? This will give you more chance in uh, estimating the real size of the LED, the extension of the um, of the lesion, and uh, of course a better better delivery and positioning of the U stents. So, yes, uh, um, thank you Raisa, for this uh, question. Of course, the preparation of any lesion uh, uh, is uh, uh, a very mandatory uh, step. Uh, but here, uh, 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 the decision was to uh, put a, a 3.5 millimeter uh, diameter uh, stent because you couldn't put uh, uh, less than that in the uh, left main. And uh, uh, actually, uh, I was uh, uh, intending to put another stand from the proximal to the uh, mid LED, but of course, if the uh, uh, bifurcation and trifurcation uh, go very well, but of course, I agree with you, uh, I have to, uh, or any lesion, we have to uh, prepare it very well uh, to uh, do a, a better uh, estimation of the uh, size of your stent. And this Thank is you, my Dr. second question. Yes. Why uh, you've, uh, you've stented the proximal, you put the proximal stent first at the left main LED, and then passed the second stent into the distal LED. Yes. Uh, I know this is not uh, this is not a contraindication, and um, usually uh, for uh, for most of us and for uh, skillful interventions like you, it's not a problem. Okay. Like in, uh, but uh, can you uh, verify this rationale? Yes, as, as usual, uh, uh, very good point, Aysam. Totally agree with you. Uh, the distal stent, uh, uh, it is preferred to put your distal stent uh, first. But for me, uh, uh, I would like to tackle the trifurcation first. And uh, as you know, we have always limited resources uh, in uh, Egypt, especially in some uh, uh, private uh, bases. So uh, if only I would uh, put uh, two stents or even three stents, not more, I will tackle the trifurcation uh, first because that is what may uh, 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 let the patient uh, pass away. Uh, so I decided to put the proximal stent first. So uh, you decided to preserve your uh, resources to the most dangerous and most important uh, vessels. Yes, right. This yes. is a good point. Yes. Okay, Thank Ahmed, you, Dr. Uh, Abdul Rahman. Yes, it was a very nice result of, and, uh, uh, and a very simple uh, approach for a very difficult case. Uh, actually, I, I would agree. Uh, I don't find any difference in putting the proximal or the distal stent, uh, as you said, and uh, also uh, I agree with you and Dr. Haysam, uh, especially when I have a severe diffusely diseased vessel like this LAD, uh, I usually put the proximal stent and then look, because uh, sometimes we have, or most of the time, we have uh, a distal edge uh, dissection, so I will need to cover it with another uh, stent. Uh, I think the size doesn't matter we, as long as you will post dilate uh, the overlap uh, segment to the proximal uh, uh, size of the proximal stent uh, with and, and you put a distal stent that can be post dilated to the size of the proximal uh, stent. Uh, the second issue, uh, it, it's my routine in, in my uh, practice to, uh, if, if I am doing a bifurcation or a trifurcation left main, to cross to the uh, side branch and uh, do a kissing balloon, so I can uh, so I open the carina and the uh, the cell to the side branch and and don't leave it uh, 
uh, with a metal uh, uh, crossing the, uh, in front of the carina of the side branch, as it carries a risk of uh, thrombosis, as Dr. Zahran said in the previous uh, lecture. So uh, my routine in left main uh, bifurcation intervention only in left main, not uh, diagonal or OM or uh, PDA or PL, but in the left main, I usually do the kissing balloon recross and do the kissing balloon and the final foot uh, for uh, uh, for minimizing the uh, the stent thrombosis uh, at the level of the distal bifurcation. Yes, but Ahmed, you did that in uh, left main trifurcation. You do uh, a three uh, balloon inflation. Yes. So, uh, you routinely do a three balloon inflation uh, after uh, doing a provisional stenting for left main trifurcation? Or a step uh, kissing balloon, uh, not uh, a triple balloon uh, kissing. Just uh, I, can, I can do it a step uh, kissing balloon for the ramus and then a step kissing balloon for the left circumflex and the uh, final pot. Uh, very good uh, tips uh, uh, or bing bong between Ahmed Saeed and Karim. Uh, I totally agree with all uh, you mentioned and though all that important uh, points. And of course, Ahmed uh, Saeed, uh, I do a routine uh, uh, kissing in most of my bifurcation uh, complex procedures. Uh, uh, but here, as Karim mentioned, if we, you do that, you have to do a triple uh, kissing balloon inflation. Otherwise, if you do only the LED and the ramus, uh, 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 mostly you will uh, 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 cause a carina, a carina shift towards the uh, LCX. However, uh, th that one was a, a, a safe and uh, a very good and a simple uh, 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 provisional stenting to left main uh, LED. And unlike uh, uh, this case, I don't uh, uh, I don't know uh, what uh, uh, what uh, uh, how much time I have, uh, Karim. I think uh, I think we should uh, go to the next case, uh, dear Abdul Rahman. Okay. okay. So this case uh, was uh, much much complicated, unlike the uh, last one. Uh, as you can appreciate here, uh, you can see it uh, clearly, Hasan. Yes. Okay. Uh, as you can appreciate here, we have a, a, an austral uh, LED with a distal uh, left main atheroma, uh, we have to uh, uh, assess it more and more. And also uh, we have uh, a uh, osteal uh, ramus and uh, a diffusely diseased osteal uh, to proximal LED. Uh, it is uh, smaller than the uh, ramus. What do you see or what your opinion regarding this uh, lesion regarding the modified Medina classification and the plan? Uh, is, two, uh, two questions, uh, Abdurrahman. Okay. Two questions. The first one, can you uh, give us an idea about the clinical background of the patient? And the second, about the situation of the right coronary arch. Okay. Uh, the right coronary artery is uh, uh, normal, completely normal. It is a, a 82 years old uh, female, uh, hypertensive, uh, known to be uh, uh, ischemic on maximum medical treatment. It, uh, she is uh, not uh, diabetic uh, and uh, also presenting with uh, crescendo uh, angina uh, despite maximum doses of anti ischemic measures. Uh, our coronary angio, as you can appreciate, uh, uh, this is the PCI. Our coronary angio uh, uh, revealed uh, a distal left main atheroma, osteal uh, ramus, uh, significant osteal ramus and osteal LCX, and a diffuse atheroma at the osteal to proximal LED.
Okay, so uh, give us an, uh, a hint about your strategy in this patient. Actually, I believe that uh, this patient is a very, very uh, complex uh, 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 lesions because it is a, 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 it is a true uh, trifurcation uh, lesion. So I decided to uh, uh, do uh, uh, all uh, that uh, uh, lesions with a complex procedure. So. I uh, began with a uh, uh, seven French uh, catheter. Abdurrahman, uh, sorry for the interruption. Do you have any view uh, to show us the ostium of the LED? Because I see a thrombus containing lesion in the circumflex and the high OM. But yes, you, you are right. You are something right. Something in the ostium LED. You are right. You are right, Zahran. Actually, this is uh, the uh, uh, PCI uh, views. But of course, uh, you will see. Uh, the uh, proximal and ostial LED in the uh, uh, coming views. Uh, but we had a significant proximal uh, LED lesion and a hazness in the uh, ostial, uh, both uh, side branches here, the Raymond and the LCX. So I decided to uh, do uh, a trifurcation with uh, two guiding casters uh, 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 what's called the uh, bing bong techniques, uh, because I believe that I will uh, uh, for sure do uh, a triple uh, kissing balloon uh, inflations in such uh, a case. And I wouldn't actually uh, truly expect what will uh, uh, go with this patient. So the first step, I uh, passed three uh, wires, three uh, workhorse wires, and I decided to uh, pre-dilate the most uh, tight uh, lesion, which was the LCX here, of the two side uh, branches. Sorry. And then I go for stenting of the uh, proximal LED and the whole uh, left main uh, up to the uh, mid LED with 3.538 uh, stent. And that was the uh, uh, angiogram after putting the first stent. Sorry. This program. And as you can appreciate, we have two guiding catheters. And uh, as I used to do a uh, two level uh, bot to oppose the uh, struts uh, uh, very good against the ostium of each of these uh, two side branches. So uh, you can extend if uh, one or two millimeters of your uh, struts against the ostium of the uh, side branch. And that is the uh, 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 the uh, real uh, benefit coming from the uh, uh, pot technique, uh, of course, in addition to uh, will uh, oppose the proximal. Uh, On which wires are passing through which guiding? I mean, which two wires from yes. one guiding and the third wire from which guiding? Yes, uh, 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 very good question. Uh, the first uh, two wires. Uh, uh, of the uh, LED and the LCX from the uh, engaged uh, uh, catheter, which was uh, seven French, and the uh, uh, the third wire uh, to the ramus is from the uh, second disengaged uh, guiding catheter. Okay, so you, you know that uh, from the six French or the seven French guiding catheter, you can pass the three wires from one uh, guiding catheter? Of course, 
Of course, uh, you can pass three wires from six French castor, not from seven French castor. I mean, uh, you can pass three wires and you can pass one stent and one balloon from the seven French, which is yes, all what you need to perform the trifurcation. Yes, that is correct. But let me ask you back. Uh, if you uh, have to do triple balloon inflation. Tracing. Uh, you want to make a tracing. This is the only situation where you will need an eight French or a seven French and a six French. Yes. You, you want are. to make a tracing. So, so you are planning in this case to make a three stem technique and the tracing from the start. Yes, of course. Okay. okay. Just to clarify to those who are learning from us what we are doing here, because we demonstrated in the previous case that in the seven French, we passed a stent, a balloon, and we passed three wires. But yes. we didn't plan to make a tracing. So what is different here is that he wants to make three balloons inflated at the same time. Yes. This needs an eight French guiding, which is most probably was not available at that center. So yes. he's using a seven French and a six French. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, you are, as usual, uh, totally clear at this point, uh, Zahran. Uh, uh, now to the time after uh, uh, doing a very good uh, pot to recross uh, the two wires or the two side branches with the Ramus and the LCX. And as you can appreciate here, the uh, uh, balloon goes very easily after uh, recrossing the two gelled wires uh, in the two side branches. And uh, uh, opening the uh, struts and uh, preparing to uh, put uh, stent using uh, cap technique in that LCX. Of course, we have hisness in the uh, uh, osteal uh, ramus, and we'll see how we can deal with this uh, hisness. Uh, putting our stent in the uh, osteal uh, LCX and do uh, a, uh, a kissing between the uh, two stents of the uh, left main LED and the osteal LCX stent. And this is the angiogram after putting the two stents. Okay, let me ask you here, Zahran, what is your opinion regarding the situation now? Okay, if Zahran is not with us, uh, can I hear from Haysam? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm here, Abdurrahman. Please, uh, can you please repeat your question? Okay. Uh, after uh, putting our second stent in the uh, osteal uh, LCX, Yes. Uh, we uh, do uh, uh, kissing, okay. and as you can appreciate, we have uh, a good angle between the LED and the LCX, of course. The LCX is the second side branch here in our trifurcation. So uh, I have to do uh, kissing, and uh, I do a step pot as uh, I used to uh, do. And that is the okay. final result. So first of all, uh, let me let me say a notification here. So now it is apparent that what we are treating as a ramus after we modified the distal left main zone now is a high diagonal, as we were saying from the start. That yes. uh, in the previous lecture. 85% of what we ana anatomically or angiographically describe as a ramus is not arising from the left main. It's either arising from the LED as a high diagonal or arising from the LCX as a high ON. After you put your metal in the LED and in the LCX, you did the LCX by a tap technique. Yes? yes. Yeah, so, sure. yes. so you modified the carina more towards having a 90 degree angle. So you actually opened the space between the LED and the LCX because this carina now is scaffolded by metal from both sides. So it is more rigid and more open. 
So the anatomy now is very clear that this is a high diagonal branch arising from the LED and its ostium is pinched now more than 90%. So you will need to recross because this wire now is behind the stent struts. You need to take it out and recross and maybe, I don't know, but maybe someone else can propose that you can make a kissing between the diagonal and the LED and you don't need to make a tracing. Just a kissing between the diagonal and the LED would be enough. But okay. also a tracing will also be fine. The only disadvantage of the tracing is that the three vessels are three millimeter circumflex, three millimeter diameter and 3.5 millimeter LED. The left main is uh, five millimeter. So you would not like to have any of the three balloons protruding into the left main. It can cause severe ovalization and distortion of the stent. Thank you, Zahran, for these uh, nice tips. Uh, of course, uh, this uh, actually this uh, this left main uh, uh, was uh, uh, optimized by 5.5 NC balloon. Uh, that's the balloon uh, uh, which I do the bot with. Uh, and of course, uh, now we have a modified uh, uh, Carina and whether uh, this uh, branch uh, is uh, Ramus or a high OM or as you uh, uh, cleverly mentioned, it is now not uh, a Ramus. Uh, it is a very, uh, maybe a very high diagonal. Uh, our definition of trifurcation is to have a, a, a vessel between the LED and the LCX within uh, uh, three to five millimeters, uh, uh, either from the left main itself or from the LED or from the LCX. And of course, uh, my uh, plan with to do a triple uh, casing balloon inflation, actually uh, I had withdrawn it because of this uh, very nice result. And of course, we have also a haziness or bench from this uh, very high uh, diagonal. But again, as you can appreciate, uh, that is the, the haziness which was uh, originally present from the start. And uh, the patient, uh, unlike the whole procedures, uh, uh, have uh, many and many uh, episodes of uh, uh, agonizing chest pain uh, and hypotension was very far, doing very well uh, on table. So I decided to uh, minimize the complexity of this uh, procedure and to follow up only the patient with uh, this uh, result. Uh, that uh, may be not uh, very uh, uh, optimum, but uh, uh, I thank God to uh, reach this point uh, safely with this very complex uh, procedure and uh, trifurcation. Uh, and thank you for uh, uh, your uh, questions and interactions. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so uh, much, Abraham dear Abdurrahman. Uh, I will pass the it mic to very... Haysam uh, and Karim to give the final comments about this case. So please, uh, Dr. Haysam, then Dr. Karim, uh, then Dr. Ahmed Saeed. Thank you, dear Abdurrahman. Um, uh, it was uh, a very lucky uh, and uh, a very good uh, final result. Um, I would like um, to ask you uh, about your program in following up this patient because um, this is an elderly patient and uh, the, the signs and th symptoms of ischemia will be a little bit less clear in this patient. Uh, so I would like to follow her up uh, more thoroughly to make sure that this large uh, diagonal branch will not cause any problems uh, in the future. Uh, but thank you for uh, the, the good case. Karim? Okay, before, uh, Karim, I would like to thank you, Haysam. Uh, all, all my left main uh, complex procedures, uh, I do uh, a, a angiogram after one year. Uh, that's maybe may not following uh, 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 guidelines or uh, recommendations, but all my left main patients, I do uh, a, a routine coronary angiogram after one year. Uh, thank you, thank you Abdurrahman. 
Um, so uh, uh, th these are few uh, short uh, uh, final uh, comments uh, from me. Um, I, I think uh, we, uh, we dealt today with a very uh, tough uh, clinical uh, and uh, interventional scenario, which is the left main trifurcation. Uh, remember to uh, collect all your clinical and your technical data and uh, try not to do uh, ad hoc BCI for this, uh, uh, for this, for this uh, technical difficulty. Of course, uh, if you have an acute situation with uh, hemodynamic instability that necessitates that you continue the procedure, uh, you can continue, but you should do a good planning for uh, this type uh, of lesion. And remember, uh, cabbage is, is always there. If you uh, felt that uh, this uh, uh, lesion is uh, technically very uh, demanding and difficult, and uh, or if you have a high syntax score, so cabbage uh, may be preferred. And again, if you decided to do this uh, type of lesion, uh, good planning, uh, be sure that all your equipments uh, are available. Uh, why are every uh, important vessels and uh, all the vessels arising from the left main are important? Do good uh, pre-dilatation. Uh, try to use uh, IVAS as much as you can uh, uh, with this type of lesion. And uh, final kissing and final bolt, of course, is very important. Uh, as Zahran said, the less metal is better. So one better than two, better than three stents. Um, and again, uh, thank you, Zahran and uh, Abdurrahman, for uh, these uh, very, very uh, nice cases. Thank you. Saeed, uh, would you like to give us some final comments, please? Uh, thank you, dear uh, friends and colleagues. Thank you, uh, Zahran, for your nice cases. For your nice case, thank you, Abdurrahman, for your nice cases. Uh, actually, I have no more scientific comment. You have covered all uh, the data. Uh, I just would like to thank you all for uh, the great uh, cases and the great discussion. Uh, thank time you now uh, for Abrahman to say a few words uh, before we finish this word. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you for your uh, comments. I would like uh, finally to thank uh, the whole CEC board, uh, uh, Zahran, uh, Karim, uh, Saeed, Haysam. Uh, actually, uh, it was uh, a very, very uh, nice uh, course. They do most of the effort uh, as a very uh, uh, clever and experienced uh, intervention uh, experts. Uh, I would like truly to thank you all. Uh, we have come to uh, uh, the end of this uh, elegant uh, course. Uh, I would like to hear from each one of them and uh, hear from Zahran what is coming or up upcoming, uh, inshallah, in the uh, next uh, 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 era. Yes, Abdurrahman, thank you so much. Uh, actually, we have uh, a very nice plan uh, going on uh, with the whole uh, CEC board uh, contributing there. Uh, after we finish this uh, bifurcation course, maybe we will take uh, some rest from uh, Tuesdays a little bit until we arrange for the upcoming intervention course. Also, it's going to be something uh, multinational that you would like a lot. Uh, involving very hot topics, uh, very nice cases from inside and outside Egypt, and also uh, very elegant uh, board discussions. The congenital heart disease course uh, is uh, still working. We have uh, three or four more uh, webinars to finish, maybe by the end of September. So maybe by October, we will be ready to start also a very, uh, let's say, a surprising course, which we have been organizing for the past uh, three or four months with uh, many international partners as well. Uh, we will also continue our Thursdays as usual. So next uh, Thursday, uh, Dr. Karim Mahmoud is organizing uh, for us a very nice uh, webinar about prosthetic heart valves involving crosstalks and discussions between cardiologists and cardiac surgeons also. Uh, and maybe next Saturday, we will have the double outlet uh, right ventricle discussion with the congenital heart disease uh, team as well. 
So, of course, we are all happy and proud to have all our viewers and followers on board with us, and we usually learn from their feedback and advice. And uh, my uh, sincere uh, thank you to every single one in the board of the CEC and every single one that joined us in this team of the Intervention Vitalization Campus at TEC. So I will pass the mic to Dr. Karim, please. Uh, thank you, Zahran. And we're waiting for you in the next Thursday, uh, 9 p.m., with uh, a prosthetic uh, valve uh, choice uh, dysfunction uh, complication. Uh, we promised that it will be a very uh, nice uh, webinar. So thank you all and uh, have a good night. So, Dr. Haysam, maybe you can tell us a final few words. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Abdurrahman, for this uh, bifurcation campus. We've uh, learned a lot uh, through a long journey between all the techniques, all the tips and tricks. Um, and thank you all to all our fellows and audience uh, and guests uh, from, from all over Egypt to participate in uh, this uh, campus. Uh, we are eager uh, to have you uh, all in the different uh, waves and webinars that we are doing at the CEC. And uh, we are uh, eager to, uh, to have the next uh, Thursday because it will be very, very interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ais and uh, Dr. Ahmed Saeed. Would you like to say something to the viewers? Thank you, Dr. Zahran. Thank you, my friends. Uh, it was a very nice journey. Uh, it's, it was really a uh, very long journey, but uh, we have enjoyed all the cases uh, in all the, uh, the different scenarios in uh, bifurcation. Thank you uh, so much, all the CEC board. Thank you uh, so much, all our uh, moderators and the professor that have joined us uh, uh, the previous lectures. And thanks to uh, all our viewers all over the world. Uh, I hope we have enjoyed the, the course. Thank you. So back to you, uh, Abdul Rahman. Maybe you can finalize this course now. Uh, thank you, uh, dear Zahran. Thank you, my dear friends. Haysam, uh, Kareem, Ahmed Saeed. Uh, all, all of you uh, and uh, me as one of you, uh, I think, uh, do uh, a great job. And our dear friends, professors, fellows uh, uh, have learned and also as well as uh, all of us have learned a lot from each other. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, dear. And uh, uh, sure we'll be uh, back with uh, a very uh, also uh, uh, outstanding courses organized by my uh, dear friends and all of us will uh, always uh, share with you a lot of uh, uh, high-level uh, science. Thank you.